Hello, 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 you amazing hackers. I hope you're all doing well today. We have a bit of a special episode because we're doing a room that's been created by two of our subscribers. One is called Andreas and the other one is called The Heart 42 If you guys want to meet them, they're on our Discord channel as well, so let's get right into it, shall we? We're going to split this one up into two episodes. We're going to do the first flag first, of course, and then we're going to do the second one. But first, let's read the description real quick, shall we? One of your clients has been hacked by the Carpe Diem cyber gang and all their important files have been encrypted. They have hired you to help them recover an important file that they need to restore their backups. They have contacted the Cy Carpe Diem cyber gang and paid a ransom but have not heard anything back. The countdown timer is ticking since they visited and they are now running out of time to recover their data before the keys are deleted on the server. Can you retrieve the keys and help the client restore their data before time runs out? That file is available to download on the machine slash downloads slash database dot corp. But that download section is not part of the challenge. That's important, guys. So first things first, of course, we want to do an nmap scan. So for that, we're going to go to our command line. I've already done the nmap scan for you guys, as you can see here. And we see that port 80 is open. So when that's, well, that's done, I want to also run Nikto in the background. So we can do some other stuff while we uh, while Nikto's running. Let's copy the IP address of our server and let's paste it in here and it's going to run real quick and we're going to see some results. Um, and then we can also do, let's see, some burp content discovery after we visit the site itself. Let's see that we open Firefox, there we go. So if we surf to the IP address, as you guys can see, we come into this wrapped website that belongs to the Carpe Diem cyber gang and they've stolen all our data. We can see a Bitcoin entry box, an input box and a proof input box where we have to paste our wallet. And if we enter some, enter some random gibberish in here, we can see invalid wallet pop up. And if we enter the same Bitcoin address as <coughs> is our payment address and we send that we also get an alert box so the first thing i want to do is inspect element and i want to look at any potential javascript code in here because i see alert pop-ups and that points me right back to javascript also i can see in my network if i go to my xhr i can see that no requests have left so it's basically a javascript blockage here and let's see what's happening <coughs> Now the first script that we come upon, we can see this function triple A and it takes this input wallet and it looks at the value in wallet and it compares it to this Bitcoin address, which is actually the Bitcoin address that we have to send our payment to. So this is basically just preventing us from sending the Bitcoin uh, address that we already sent, that we got as a payment method. Now the next thing we see is a regular expression that's going to help us with, that's going to actually uh, require that we input a valid Bitcoin address. So if we just change one character, all of these methods should be bypassed. Let's send it. There we go. We don't see an error pop up anymore. But if we look into the network tab, we see only an options call and we don't see any post or any get requests. That com that's because when we look into the console here, we can see some issues, cross origin request blocked. The same origin policy disallows reading the remote resource at carpedm.net slash proof. So this is basically making a call to carpedm.proof. There are a couple of things we can try. We can try sending the input of this uh, form data to the IP address dot slash carpedm slash proof, but that's not going to work because we have a course uh, protection in here. So we have to make sure that we actually serve to carpedm.net and that we actually go from there. But how do we do that, you might ask? Well, there's a really simple solution for that. You just go to your nano hosts file. In here, we have some interesting files already. So Nikto, for example, is finding slash downloads. Let's quickly open up a new tab here and open up our ETC hosts. Now, I'm not going to do it as sudo, but you guys might need to. I'm just going to open it as a regular user because I don't need any edits and I'll tell you guys why. You guys might need to edit something later on. But as you can see here, the last rule that I have is already my IP address and I can already, uh, is already my target and I already made it go to carpetdm.net. So when I actually open that URL in Firefox, you guys can see that the same URL opens. 
Now I'm going to open the developer console again. And I'm going to open the network tab. We're going to copy and paste this real quick and we're going to change another character. And when we send our request now, we can see the post request has been sent. Now we also have our traffic connected to burp, of course. So we have two things here. Uh, first thing I want to do, of course, is content discovery as well. You guys might need to do some other tools for this, like GoBuster, but I just use Burp Pro. And we'll see some things in here, like the slash proof, slash downloads, and slash images folders. And also slash style sheets, of course. Now, real quick, let's go back to the next step. We've looked at the JavaScript, we've browsed the website. Now, let's see what happens when we actually send our proof. So we have our request here. Let's try and tamper with that a little bit. We have a few things we can see in here. First of all, we have our proof parameter. Let's post this request. This seems to get reflected in here. So if I add, for example, a J in here, you're going to see that, oh, right. So the real character was probably a J. <laughs> okay, so let's go real quickly. What? why that didn't work um, because you can see in here that the real bitcoin address that we're not supposed to use actually had a j as the last character so when you send that to the server it's going to ask you really <laughs> which is really clever really good easter egg didn't even see that guys so when we ha we actually have another parameter here which is size let's make this a little bit smaller see what happens Okay, so it seems to actually represent what happens when we do our proof. Let's see if we can make this bigger. Let's see if we can make some overflow happen. So let's make this a uh, thousand characters instead of 42. And then we get some really interesting stuff. As you guys can see, we get some juicy, juicy information in here. Now we get an X Hazura admin secret. This we're going to need for later. This indicates that we have GraphQL and also the URL in here seems to indicate that we're talking to a GraphQL. So what we're going to do for now is we're just going to copy this information. We're going to go back to our notepad in here and we're going to need this code later. Don't mind that for now, guys. We're just going to save this secret in here so that we have it for just to be sure. Now, this content discovery isn't going to find anything else. So I'm just going to terminate it here. Uh, and that's also, that's pretty much all we can do with this request from, from this standpoint. Now let's get back to the basics a little bit more. We have our get request. Let's send this to the repeater and check this out. There's not a whole lot going on in here, but we can see two things. We have some cookies in here, a countdown timer and a session cookie. Also, if we go and look at Nikto, let's see where we have it in here. It's going to be. Let's open up our Nikto. We can see that it's going to indicate the cookie cookie countdown created without HTTP only flag. Um, and the session cookie is not created with the HTTP without the HTTP only flag. But let's see what's inside this session cookie, shall we? Because that might be important. Let's copy this. And you can notice some percent 3D in here. That's URL encoded. Let's go back to Firefox. Uh, that's not Firefox. There we go, and let's URL, uh, let's paste 64 decode this. Because what that value is actually saying is, uh, let's see in here, this percent 3D is URL encoded for equals equals. So when we decode this, this paste 64 value in here, we can see that actually our IP address is in the session cookie. Now, when we think about what's happening, there has to be an administrative backend because as you can see, the um, the request didn't get picked up automatically. Nothing really happens. We just send a post request and nothing really happens in the background. We don't get mails and that kind of stuff. Um, there has to be some kind of backend administrative panel. And in that administrative panel, we might be able to insert a cross-site scripting attack factor. So for that, we can do some really easy, really cool stuff in Burp. I'm going to show you guys a couple of different ways to do URL decoding and encoding. And here in my URL decoder, I've prepared a cross-site scripting attack vector, script source equals, and then a request to my server, and then an end script tag. 
Now what I've done is I've base64 encoded this and you're going to notice some pluses in here. Those pluses are not allowed. They have to be also base64 uh, URL encoded. So that's going to be percent to B. Let's do that again here, percent to B. There we go. And let's copy this value and let's paste this into our session cookie. So we're going to do some blind cross-site scripting attacks in here. There we go. Now what we need to do is set up a web server as well, of course, that's going to be very important. So let's get the command up on screen and show you guys what's going to happen. As you can see, I'm calling on Python 3 here to spin up a module called HTTP.server, which is a simple HTTP server as the name suggests. And it's going to bind to my uh, VPN's IP address. So when I launch this, there's a headless browser running in the background and it's going to simulate that the user, that the Carpe Diem attacking group is going to uh, browse to the website to check out what's happening and the cross-site scripting attack factor is going to get triggered. Now if you look closely in my burp suite, because this was one of the issues I had, let's get it on screen real quick here. Let's look into my decoder, you can see that I'm serving this content on port 8000 and that's also where my Python simple HTTP server started up. It's very important that you have the right port in there. Now, if you have that running every once or twice a minute, every one or two minutes, sorry guys, you're going to see a request coming in and that request is going to try to ask for p.js, which you're going to see in here, p.js, and that's a JavaScript file. Now in that JavaScript file, we've prepared a little payload for you guys. And that's what you see in here. But the first thing you're going to see is this p.js. Now, if you have a keen eye, you probably already saw the flag, but we're going to explain it anyway. What we did in there was we had a value. So that was the code that we have in here. We have this code for making a new XH XML HTTP request. So that's just JavaScript code. Uh, and it's going to open a request to get the URL at this specific IP address. So that's my simple HTTP server from Python on port 8000. Really important that you get that guys properly. Uh, and then it's going to make a query to, uh, and then I pasted the, uh, the local storage in there. And what local storage is, it's, it's like, um, you can try document.cookie with your JavaScript. You can try to read your local storage. It's basically like a vault that contains stuff like secrets and that kind of stuff. Um, you can try to read that and I just stringified it using the JSON command. So JSON.stringify and then you can do the r.send command. Now what I did was I just copied this. I went back to my burp decoder. So here we go. <coughs> I pasted my code in here and you have to do this without uh, line breaks. So you cannot do this, you have to do it like this. And here you can again encode this as a base64 value. You can see it in here. And what we did was we created a new file on our Python HTTP server. Uh, and that file simply contains the JavaScript code eval atop. And then in there is going to be our base64 encoded value. So what this is going to do is show us the local storage value through a request that's being made to our server. And that's going to look exactly like this. So you're going to make a request to pid.js and you're going to uh, unpack that file. The server is going to read it, is going to execute a JavaScript code in here and it's going to basically uh, make a new request to our server that contains a parameter which has the secret in here. You can see secret again. This was the secret that we uh, saved. And you can see the flag in here, THM and this percent %7B sign is just a curly bracket. So far so good, percent %7B is again a curly bracket. So that's how you guys find the first flag. I hope you guys found this video interesting. I'm going to make another video about finding the second flag as well. Really, really tough box, but I super enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, one tip I'm going to give you guys is you're going to have to, uh, for the, let's see here in the uh, repeater, you guys noticed that I made a get request and this is where I replaced my cookie. You cannot do this in a post request. The post request is just for reading the secret, this secret here. 
and the get request is going to be for the session cookie so i hope you guys enjoyed if you did you guys know what to do it's on screen here somewhere thank you guys very much for watching and i hope i'll see you in the next video bye bye everybody see you later